Yeah, so second session. Any questions popped up during coffee break? Huh? We'll take that later on then. So uh, this session will focus a little bit on the commerce side of things. So we'll uh, also show the commerce. Uh, we'll, we'll do that quite brief, briefly. We can really drill deep into doing online campaigns and things like that, but we're not going to do that. So we can save that. If someone is interested, we can show that afterwards. Then we'll go in and talk about uh, actually a new thing that we're launching. We're actually launching hosting as well. Uh, we're going to talk about the add-ons and uh, also at the end the roadmap, what is happening in the future. Okay, so uh, in 2008 we acquired a company called Media Chase. Uh, before that, a few years before that, we signed a strategic partnership with these guys. We took their commerce engine and called it Episode of Commerce. So we tested the product from a technical point of view. And we've tested the, mar the, the market need for a CMS and uh, commerce together. And it, was really, it, was, yeah, it was really successful, so we acquired them. Uh, since then, we've had hundreds of customers uh, using the CMS and, and the commerce. And of course, the first customer being a Swedish guy is... You have to click. Ah. IKEA. <laughs> So I, I, IKEA runs on, on Episerver, and this is just one of their sites, uh, which is the business section. So you can, uh, and of course it's built with an Allen key, the whole site. But uh, your jokes are getting worse, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm a, I'm a father of two. That's my, that's my mission in life now. <laughs> but this is the business.ikea.com, so you buy the business version, like these furniture, so it's not for, for end consumers. You can, you can buy for your home office though, uh, but it's in 27 countries. It's actually uh, uh, more than 1 million SKUs and 2 million catalog items, 150,000 users, uh, and it's integration, integrated with SAP. So that's just one, it's a really... These guys, they haven't in implemented, uh, depending on where you are in the world, they haven't implemented the uh, uh, checkout. Check because IKEA doesn't want you to check out sometimes. They want you to go, so you can print your shopping list because they want you to go to the store and walk through. Yeah, anyway, everyone who's been to IKEA, you know, you have to go through the whole mm -hmm. store. And when you're at the counter, there's always a line. There's always these things that you just have to buy. <laughs> that's just, but that's the, they're pretty smart. Yeah, yeah but we, we thought that we might actually show you a little bit. So you've seen the CMS now, and now you'll see how the commerce works together with the CMS. So that's your. That was your turn. <laughs> okay. Um, so we'll just have a quick look at commerce to give you a bit of a flavor and, and feel for it, um, to see what's feasible, I suppose, or, or, or what's there. Um, so we're going to use another demo site called Inateca, um, which I believe means wine library. So it's all around, it's all around wine, nothing too specific. <laughs> um, so we're going to look at what's out of the box, I suppose. And what I mean by out of the box is you still have to build your templates, etc. But uh, the functionality within these templates is essentially just calling the API directly. There's not a lot of massive custom work that, that's going on in here. Okay. So that's what allowed sites like Colorado and JB Hi-Fi and Fusion Retail to be able to build pretty decent featured transactional sites relatively quickly um, because a lot of functionality comes um, through the API natively. Okay. All right, so we're on the home page at the moment. Um, I'll just point out a couple of features on here. We have various promotions that are sliding through, 20% off all red wines, um, our newest arrivals, 20% um, off champagne, etc. So it's possible to be able to create your own promotions um, and campaigns within the commerce. So there's a rules engine in there that allows you to define the condition of the promotion and then the reward. Um, so there's a lot of complex promotions around um, fashion retail and things like that. So we can provide quite a detailed level of promotions that can be created. Um, we might have featured products that we manually want to place on there, such as our favourites, etc. Um, we might want new collections to be highlighted on there. Uh, Commerce contains um, reviews and ratings as well, um, so it's sort of stealing a part of the community framework a little bit in there, so it has all the moderation and, and those sort of aspects um, sitting inside there as well. Um, if we go into a simple sort of product listing type page, um, 
we have the various facets down the left hand side um, that are populated dynamically based on the products that are sitting inside commerce. Um, so we can filter down based on a collection of facets, etc., and move back up again. Um, it's easy to be able to compare products with each other. We can have the Facebook liking, etc., the reviews, the ratings, etc., um, as I mentioned. Um, so let's just compare a couple of products. Um, we can highlight the changes between the products quite easily with, with the data that we're capturing, all the product information. Um, with the concept of wishlist shopping baskets, um, of course, so it's possible to have multiple types of collections. Um, if you are working in a B2B type approach as well, um, you might want different types of um, accounts or invoices um, that might be more relevant rather than um, just a simple basket or something like that. Um, so let's add maybe a couple of items. Right there. Uh, if we go into the product details, um, we can show any information we like about the product. We can have the reviews again. We can also create relationships between other products, so we can do it manually. We can also do it dynamically based on an additional module we have. So we, it allows us to do the cross-selling, the upselling. You may also like people who bought this product also bought this product, um, all those types of relationships. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, if we go to maybe our basket, just quickly, we might have promotion codes as well. So. We might create a promotion that's applied dynamically, so if we spend over $100 we get 20% off shipping or something like that, but you can also create explicit promotion codes that you use in your marketing or you push out to your social campaigns and things like that. Again, we have um, relationships you may also like, etc. Um, maybe if we quickly go through, check out, we can have um, a variety of different processes to check out, so it's completely up to you guys and what sort of process your business works with. Um, we can have anonymous checkout, we can have one click checkout. Um, if I register, sorry, if I just log in quickly, uh, go back to my basket. I've got a couple of additional items on here, but go to checkout. Um, we can track multiple addresses for various people uh, or for your customers, I suppose, so you don't have to complete the information again. We can dispatch to multiple addresses if you like. Um, so for example, if you only have five out of the six items in stock that's sitting inside the basket, you might want to ship out what's available and ship out the rest when it becomes available. Or uh, it's quite common that a lot of um, friends might work together to use a promotion. So if there's a promotion, 10 t-shirts for the price of six or something like that, um, you might have four friends that buy the 10 t-shirts and save the price, so you might want to ship it out to the, ten, the different friends, things like that can work with um, multiple shipping providers, etc. Um, so this is just a s traditional sort of um, three-step checkout, I suppose. We can work with different um, payment providers as well. You can use multiple providers at once. So you might have a gift card or an account, um, and you might pay the remaining by credit card, <coughs> etc. if you like, um, so you can update remaining to pay. So all this functionality is essentially um, out of the box, so to speak. So we just pay by phone. Everything that happens on the site is real time to the back end as well um, because the site's essentially just calling the API is equivalent to the back end. Um, if we go into my profile, um, each customer can see their orders, can see their history, can manage their address books, can manage um, their wish lists, can view their settings so they can see what reviews they put it in, um, etc. If we go to my orders, uh, we can reorder we can view the order, we can see the current state, which will be well, typically updated in real time to be on integration, etc. Um, so you can present what any, in, any information you like to the customer. If it's whether it's B2B, you might want some control over what your, what your employees are ordering, etc. Um, so that's sort of a brief intro into the site. Um, if we go into the CMS, we still have the same CMS, of course. <coughs> And we still have a similar sort of flexibility that we have um, in standard sort of sites. Um, so, for example, um, we've got a section here, wine, viewed by region, the different regions, and various promotions in here. And that's mapping to the navigation, just as per the CMS. We have simple product listing pages, which just list out all the products coming from the commerce backend. 
So the difference between the CMS and the commerce is we have a separate commerce manager where we can manage our orders, manage our products, manage our promotions, manage various reports, manage our customers, what organisations they belong to, um, all that sort of information in there. Um, if we just go to the homepage, um, for example, on the right hand side we have a separate section in here called catalogue. So um, we place all our products uh, or our variations um, into um, a catalogue or multiple catalogues. You might have catalogues with different markets, different sites, etc. Um, and they contain categories such as regions, um, different sites. Uh, if we select maybe Australia for example, we then have all the products that are sitting in here pre-populated and we can just drag them into the site and use them where we want to use them, I suppose. Okay. Um, if we go into maybe a promotion page, I'm not sure what this is going to look like. Um, so we can have the same flexibility in the CMS, of course. Um, we can drag listings into pages, we can create blocks. So we might have various blocks that show us like the most viewed bottle of New Zealand wine, the top bottle that creates the most conversions. Um, all the wine, New Zealand wine that we put on sale, we can drag it into pages and we can use it. So um, you've still got all the same flexibility um, that you have in the CMS, but it then becomes more um, commerce context based, I suppose. So we just wanted to give you a bit of an insight. Um, Look, can't, you, can't you show how you create a page? Well, we've gone through. No, but it's just pretty cool that you actually can drag and drop the... Okay. Do you want to do it? No. <laughs> um, what do you want to call it then? Andreas. Okay. Um, okay. Alright, so maybe we want to put, what, all the Australian wine on there? Yeah, there are no Swedish wine, so... Yeah. Drag it in there if you like. Um, maybe you want to put a banner on there. What's Aussie promotion? Okay. Um, that, yeah, that's uh, but that's a banner. Yeah. Like Anyth anything else? <laughs> okay, I can drive. And th this is pretty cool that you actually, so this is a block that renders in different ways and you can see that you can actually have different content on the, uh, the block that the appears if they're in a wide format or if they're a tight for, uh, so if I drag this block up here, there, you can only see the banner, but if I drag it down here again, it's the banner plus that text there. Does that make sense? So it's sort of aware of where it's, so you can add content depending on where it is as well. Yeah, so it's kind of a minute a little bit when talking about the CMS. Um, you can present different elements of the content that that block is holding depending on the context of where it's being placed, I suppose. If that makes sense. Um, so in here, as Andre said, we've got the introduction text there as well, um, as opposed to when it's placed in the right hand column. Um, that's probably another good idea. Um, if we look at mobile for this for this page, uh, you notice that um, all those blocks that I've dragged on there have disappeared, and that's because I decided I didn't want the same listing, I didn't want the same blocks for the mobile version. I might just want um, just the specific product details of a select products for New Zealand wine or Andreas's promotion, rather than having the full complete listing in there with all the facets and stuff because it comes, it's more tedious and the context has probably changed and, and things like that. So I could then drag in, um, what, <coughs> maybe just one bottle of wine or something like that and it will flip over for the mobile versus the web. Okay. Um, Let's quick, quickly show the commerce back in. Two. Okay. So we just do a quick walkthrough of the Commerce Manager. So the Commerce Manager is the, um, the back end, I suppose, for managing the various systems of the site. So the customer management, the catalogue management, um, orders, marketing, which are the various promotions, any assets that you're associating to your products, videos, PDFs, um, images, galleries, etc. Um, and then reports, so um, 
reports based on what promotion has been successful, sales reports, orders reports, um, things like those. So catalog management is probably the main section as I mentioned. We can build up any amount of catalogs we like for different regions, different markets, different types of products. You might have seasonal products, um, things like that. Um, so inside the catalogs we can create different categories. Um, so we have wine region, we've got New Zealand, and then sitting inside New Zealand we have all our um, variations, our, our products, um, our bundles and, and things like that. Um, so yeah, so it's a, it's a full featured commerce tool. So you can work with products and SKUs, stock keeping units. So for example, a product could be a t-shirt and that product has a number of SKUs. So that's t-shirt white, then you have t-shirt white, small, large, medium. So you can have different variations. On that, but it's just st still the same price. If that's can you populate the, the catalog management from an external tool? Absolutely, eighty percent of. Or vice versa. Yeah. So you, you usually the point of truth is somewhere else in an ERP, mm -hmm. somewhere where you have the stock level, price, uh, uh, some sort of basic content. It's getting pulled in, I even if it's live integration or if it's a batch job. Products get into the commerce manager here. Sometimes it's. That's, you just store it there and you present it with a CMS, but sometimes you also enrich it with content in here, and then you do, you can add the online campaigns here as well. But that's, yeah. yeah probably 80% of sites will be integrated, I yeah. suppose, with a custom panel or something like that for the product. Um, commerce, the nature of commerce sites, you might integrate with the CRM for the customer management information, you might have ERP for the orders, you might have PIMs for all the product information. It can kind of but the commerce manager is probably the point of truth for the site itself, and it's all collated in there, and then it's used and presented on the site. <coughs> yeah. So as Andreas mentioned, we can have products, variations. Uh, we can also create packages, bundles, dynamic packages, so you can group products or variations together, sell them at a new price, or have, the, have them at a sum of the price, or we can have dynamic packages, like when you buy a computer from HP, you can, s you can build your product during checkout, and things like that as well. Um, I don't know, how much, how much detail do we go into? Okay. <laughs> if you click on a product, yes, so, so they see that we don't have to go into the actual details, but you can see that there are... Have you clicked on one? Yep. Um, so we have all the product information that might sit in there. Um, pricing inventory. Um, variations or products can be associated to various tax categories, weights, warehouses. We can track inventory, um, so we can track what's in stock, what's reserved, pre-ordering, back-ordering, what's available, um, minimum quantities, maximum quantities. Um, we can work with tiered pricing, so this pricing is independent to the promotions. Um, it allows you to add individual prices for different um, pricing groups, different customer groups, so you might have different price points for um, accounts versus customers or gold members, silver members. Employees. Um, yeah, different currencies, prices for different quantities, different date ranges, um, etc. Um, we can manage specific SEO fields, we can manage associations between other products, um, relationships, so a variation might sit in New Zealand, it may also sit inside promotions, it might also sit inside a mixed case as well. Um, yeah. Qu quickly, uh, a campaign just show. Um, yeah, so in marketing we can create campaigns and promotions for specific customer segments if we like. Um, so if we go into 20% of Australia wine, so you can create multiple um, promotions, define them and then you can reuse them uh, when you like. Um, so or maybe I should create a new one. So we can create a promotion of different types, so we have a lot of built-in types, for example buy X, get a discount. Um, buy X, buy N, get Y a certain discount, um, various shipping, buy X, get a certain amount off shipment, but you can also build your own promotions for um, catalog items or products or for specific orders or based on shipping as well. Um, so if I uh, build my own discount for order for example, um, I can then define the purchase condition and, and reward for that promotion. So I've got all the information about the order, I've got the discount amount, the total, all the line items that have been placed into that order, I could then go into the line items. Um, so for example, um, if we've added four t-shirts um, from a specific category, we might want 20% off, or we might want to say 
get a fixed mount off or give another free t-shirt or a free pair of shorts or, or something like that. You um, can create coupon codes, various states, limit the amount of redemptions, make it available for certain time periods. Um, yeah, and it can be associated to the personalization as well. Um, so if we look inside the visitor groups, we have a collection of additional criteria, such as total spend, recent orders, so we can present products based on um, the amount of spend people have spent, their order frequency, um, what they put inside their shopping cart. So if they put um, three bottles of wine in their shopping cart, um, we might have 10% off to help them convert, things like that. Um, so we could go through it for ages. So. Is there any, I mean, is there any specific commerce elements that you guys might be interested in seeing? So the actual orders are handled by this. So it's like an invoicing system, um, tracking system that's been handled and synced and things like that. Yep. Um, what if, like, don't we be doing that? We might take the orders and we do this, uh, a warehouse on it. Take care of that. The contractor to look after all that, yeah. that stuff. Is it, um, I suppose, uh, some sort of uh, API or something that it's available for other uh, software to connect to to get that information? Yeah, so everything inside the back end and the front is all just calling the API. So it's it's just as flexible as a CMS. You can you can push it away to someone. You can build a web service to wrap around what you want them to be able to control. Um, it's it's up to you. A, a lot of clients might create the order, but then they might send an invoice or they might email the order out to someone else, and they just take care of the rest of it and do all the yeah. Um, um, it, you don't have to use all the elements of commerce. You might just use the shopping cart components, the listing out of all the products, the search, the managing of the products, but the order might go through and then it might do something else with it that somebody else takes over and actually implements it. Do you know if any sites use things like booking, like we have huts and things that people book, mm -hmm. so it's more about booking things on certain dates and rather than actually just these are product, I want to buy that thing. Yeah, we have a few, I think, yeah, we have mm -hmm. a, it's a, yeah, so uh, yeah, we, we have. Yeah, we have, I think in the States theater? We, have, theater? Is it theater? we have a, th a couple of theatres and I think in Europe we have a few hotels, oh, yeah. but it's it's very specific to them and it's it's essentially custom on top of the framework. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've alluded to or discussed uh, multi-channel content before, do you do anything with multi-channel comments? So do you have any existing sites where they've used this also for their pods? So they've got a flavour of this comment size and not like pods as well as the... Yeah, so it, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, it's in actually in our roadmap as well. Uh, we also have uh, partners not in Australia and New Zealand that have done uh, their direct post talking directly to the commerce. Yeah, but yeah. also there are companies that I know locally here that have integrated with existing post systems like Advanced Retail and those guys. Yeah, no, just in, yeah, well, integration is one aspect, but it'd be interesting to see what you're doing as a, as a unified post once more. Usually, yeah, yeah. yeah Usually now, when we get, when a customer comes to us, they already have a point of sale system. That's yeah. that's the usual scenario. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but we, we are we are talking to customers to have. So that is just another channel. So the actual person in store can have an iPad or whatever it is they have, and they can walk you through the store, do the orders. Uh, we have these in stock in the store. We'll do order this one and this one you'll have it delivered home within X number of days. Yeah. We're working with um, quite a substantial book company at the moment <laughs> for multi-channel commerce. So, in Australia? Uh, in New Zealand. So they want people to be able to um, look at the books on their iPhone at work, iPad at home when they're sitting on the couch, web maybe while they're in the office, <laughs> whatever. Um, they want them to be able to create orders, create lists um, based on all their sort of top 101 books or all those sorts of things. But then when they go into the store, they want all the point of sales in the store to know about that list that they've already created themselves. So 
there's one transaction, there's one single point. They want people to walk around the store with iPads that get the other 20 million SKUs that aren't available online and in store and that sort of stuff. So it's all integrating it together into one easy flow through the channels. Um, the next release of commerce in the next two months will June. support that in a much better way. Uh, June. 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 Yeah. There's another. So we'll talk about that sort of stuff um, in a couple of minutes. <laughs> there, there are also these sort of nice features. So when you work in the WYSIWYG editor, uh, for example, you, you write the text, the promotion, whatever sign of content you create, and you have nice functionalities. Okay, so this text, I want to link directly to a product in the shopping, uh, in the actual, in a catalog somewhere. So you can just click there and link it to. So sort of that kind of detailed integration points as well. Can you see me? At the back end. At the back end, yeah. yeah. Uh, in June. In June. <laughs> June. At the moment, it's just by catalog. So you might have multiple catalogs, but you can associate groups with the, catal the catalog at the moment. Um, I can, yeah. I can show you some screenshots of the next release as well. It's pretty. It's quite awesome. It'll give you an idea of what's what how it's how it's going. Um, um, maybe. Briefly, the order management um, within here as well, you can see I've been making a lot of orders, but you can manually create orders through the back end as well. Um, but more importantly, you can convert shopping carts into put purchase orders. Um, we quickly go into an order. You can manage all the information, um, all the activities around the order. So you can see all the information, all the purchase order. You can go into all the various details. You can change all the various states. So you can have states that are specific to you, to you guys. Um, for example, we have on hill partially shipped and progressed um, out of the box, but there might be more other states that are more relevant to you. We've got all the line items, all the shipments, we can create the multiple shipments, we can mess with the line items. You can go into users' shopping carts into the wish list and you can manipulate them if you really want to. Um, you can work with payments, so if the payments made don't equal the order total, you can do payments in here by phone or um, create other payments, etc. Um, you can manage returns, um, you can associate notes, and of course all the orders are associated to the customers as well, so you can go into the customers, what we call them contacts, um, and then you can view all their orders, all their history, uh, if we're going to admin, for example, so we can look at the order history, we can go into the wish list, so we can go into the orders, we can change all the orders around, so we can convert them to purchase orders and all that sort of stuff. You can create as many groups and you can create them in hierarchies and, and all those sorts of stuff. You can create organization groups and then you can have price points against those custom groups as well. By category or just by across all the products? Across all what, sorry? By uh, category, so this category has a discount metric, so this, and this category has... Yeah, yeah. So if yeah. You're, if you're, you can create a group, which is everyone that lives in one specific area or whatever fits in that group, and then you create a... Cat. Yeah, then you can create a campaign as well, which is uh, whatever that campaign is, if it's on shipment, if it's on uh, catalog. So you can actually say everyone, uh, the catalog Australia, so it only picks the, uh, all the wines that are in Australia. And then you just create the promotion. Everyone from that group that is visiting this catalog will automatically have 20% off. Okay. And then you can control the you know, it's a retail list like Yep. So you can either, you can either do it through the tiered pricing, or you can do it through promotions, yeah. depending on whatever's easiest or works best, I suppose. Okay. Um, should we continue with the slides? Yeah. You know, there are also so the marketing smart stats we showed at the beginning. So you can do a campaign. You can set the KPIs. So one KPI is, of course, when you have the commerces actually check out the product. So you can create a banner about a specific product mm -hmm. launch that you have, and then follow it down, have different conversion paths, and the actual KPI that you want is, is actually purchasing that product. Can you create a, a 
campaign around people's wish lists and offer a discount. So like if you've got 50 users that have got items in their wish lists from last week or a month ago or whatever, can you then create a campaign and ping out a, an email to those people or some way of tracking those people? Or don't yeah, if, 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 if they are logged in, yeah. Something. Yeah, can you ping out an email to them and say, hey, we've noticed you've got items in your wish list. Here's an incentive 10%, 20%. Yeah, you, you, you can do that, and uh, there, we're launching a new thing soon that will make that a lot easier. Yeah, so you, you can personalize based on what's in their cart and wish list, based on category or specific product, and you can then use that segmentation for other stuff as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah so like you can do the same with the shopping cart as well. Yeah, wish list is yeah, it, it is a shopping cart. Yeah. Yeah. And you can have m multiple shopping carts as well and call them whatever you want to call them. So you can say if it's got a specific product code, if it's come from a specific category, or something. You can build up rules. And yeah. So it's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. The having the CMS capabilities and the commerce capabilities in the same platform. That's sort of what makes makes EpiServer quite unique. There are no really other guys that ha has that really, have the same strong digital marketing CMS capabilities and the commerce. So it's an uh, interesting area we're in. We're happy to show a little bit more in detail the commerce. Is there any more, more question on commerce specific things? Have we missed? I think we should probably go over some of the other stuff. Okay, yeah. Time to be yeah, half an hour, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh oh, which one? <laughs> the right one. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, has anyone heard of Everweb before? No. Oh yeah, Hen yeah, look at Henrik. Uh, <laughs> so Everweb, you, Henrik, you don't count. <laughs> Everweb <laughs> is uh, something that we're launching in Australia and New Zealand now. It's our hosting. Uh, we have. Sorry. Yeah, uh, it's hosting. One part of that is actually cloud hosting. Uh, we have uh, about 2,400 customers already running on, no, 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 yeah, it's 2,400 is the la latest number, I think, that actually runs on, on no, it's 2,400 sites that runs on, on our hosting. Uh, what makes it li this unique is that we're, we're the software vendor, but we also have hosting, and we're the best in the world hosting our own software because it, we know it knows it inside out. And that means that we can offer more security when it comes to hosting, that also uh, when it comes to availability and also efficiency for partners. Uh, skip that one. Just to give you some numbers, so we're not, this is not something that we've just launched. I'll go back, hold on. Yeah. So we have six data centers in three continents. It's actually, four continents we've opened up in, I should have updated this, it's actually we've opened up in uh, in Sydney now as well. So we're slowly taking on Australia and New Zealand. 73 racks, 712 physical servers and 800 on virtual servers. And I know that in, uh, in Sweden we had, I think, uh, at least two or three data centers that are redundant between the data centers. The first customer we had hosting was actually the Swedish Stock Exchange, and that was one of the first CMS customers as well. So this is not something new that we've just come up with. We've been doing it. We just package it in another way now. We also have, when you have EverWeb and of our hosting services, you also have a service desk. So there is actually an EpiServer person that you actually can call if something happens. This is what makes this unique. Uh, and this is uh, for, for you, you guys, you have a website. Uh, when you talk to hosting providers, they talk about SLAs, service level agreements. So whatever percentage of time you have, uh, you usually get oh, on the data uh, network infrastructure, you have one sort of SLA. Uh, on the storage infrastructure, you have another SLA. On the server infrastructure, you have another one. It's, it's a lot of SLAs, but what is it that actually that you care about? It's the actual website uptime, isn't it? 
That, that's, what, that's what's really important. And that's where we come in, because we know the actual, you know, not only as the application layer, we, don't, we know the, the API server code as well. We know everything there. So we can offer an SLA on the website's uptime, not the actual application. Does that make sense? And this is a lot some, something that is really important for, the, for, for clients, because if your site is down, at Christmas shopping or whatever, the, the most when you have a campaign running, it's not good. You don't want to hear that now the uh, something happened with an application, a patch job or something. It's you just. You know, I'm not going to achieve my goals. Does this make sense? Hmm? Yeah. Not a lot more. So the EverWeb comes in three different variations. It's actually so. This is the EverWeb. This is pure hosting. So you have EpiServer. You can host it uh, at EpiServer EverWeb. Uh, we have a shared environment, a dedicated environment, and an enterprise environment. So those are the three packages. Of course, we have customers that do between these. So there is flexibility <coughs> to add services. In, uh, sort of, if you want one more server or a little bit higher SLA, etc. There is of course flexibility to do that. So this is the EverWeb, pure hosting. Uh, on top of that, we can do uh, cloud. I'm not sure I have a slide on that. Oh, sorry. And it's not just what is it? It's not just hosting. We have all the monitoring tools as well. So you have uh, like uh, uh, what's it called? Intrusion prevention and those kind of things that do actually monitor. You have CDMs if you know what that is. Content delivery networks. So you can have. Uh, uh, a delivery network that takes care of your static content, etc. So just to have very good performance. Then you have the cloud. So yeah, you all know what the cloud is. EpiServer has its own private cloud, since we have servers all over the world. And this enables customers to actually buy EpiServer as a service, so to say, as in the cloud. So if you say, I want EpiServer CMS and commerce, make it happen and then you'll get it on a server somewhere and you have a link to where you can go and then you can have a partner that customizes or if you do it yourself so that's the cloud solution it's really simple <coughs> yeah every web our software together in the cloud and it scales up automatically so some of the customers we have on, on, on EverWeb. Uh, and I'll, 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 I'll be, we have our first five customers here in Australia and New Zealand. And the, uh, the, the I've showed one of the customers uh, today on the, on the slides that they ru do run on the EverWeb, not the cloud. So, the add-ons. So we talked about the add-ons. We've had uh, something called uh, Epimore before, that you can have, uh, there are a lot of Epimore uh, add-ons on the website, but that's just, uh, that is somewhere in the world there is a partner or a customer that has something that works good together with EpiServer. What we've done is that we've rena renamed it to add-on. Together we've also enabled the platform to uh, install these add-ons easily. We have three levels of add-ons. Not sure how these slides work, Richard. <laughs> Where do you get to all the? It's after that one. Thanks. The first level of of add-ons is uh, uh, it, it's sort of like the Epimore. There is a a software or service somewhere out there. They apply to be an Epi, Epi, uh, uh, to get an add-on. It is uh, vis visu uh, visualized on our website, so you can see it there. You can. Uh, uh, if, if you want, want that add-on, you have to contact them directly and download it and buy it directly from them. So we have a few of these now. Do, do you know Silverpop and Marketo? Have you heard of that before? It's uh, marketing, there, that's marketing automation tools. So marketing automations, I will touch a little bit on this. That's sort of the, the next thing that is happening in the digital marketing space. But here are two add-ons there. Silverpop is actually on the way to going down to the next level of partnership. 
which is the, uh, uh, where we actually put a quality stamp on it. We actually test the product. Uh, uh, and you can actually download it through our add-on store. So you can actually download it and install it on, on EpiServer. But you still have to, uh, yeah, some are paid, some are free. You have to pay for it. But there's no support and no training. The next level is, uh, you don't have the slide there. Yeah, it's after the other one. <laughs> okay, just sorry, example. sorry, That's sorry. It, it, one example of this uh, add-on is uh, Site Attention. Have you heard of Site Attention? That is a search engine optimization add-on, which enables you to, what is it, keep track of your keywords. So here's an uh, example. You, you can actually get the a gadget on the right side, that, the ones that pops out, that actually keeps track of this, how you're, how sort of optimized this specific page is, and give you a suggestion on your keywords. Uh, you haven't used the keyword in the, the headline, or you should use the keywords a little bit more on this, this page, etc. Uh, this add-on costs per, it's a service, so you don't buy it up front, you, it's a monthly fee. And it's all, if you go in via the website, you can, you can see the prices there. And it, it's not expensive. It depends on, it scales up on if you have a, a 100,000 pages website, of course, and a huge traffic on it. The third level, which is a joint solution add-on, so that's more where we actually have built the integration together with the, the add-on uh, provider. Uh, it is tested. Uh, we do actually, it's sold via EpiServer. So we actually sell it to, via the partner to the customers and we support it as well. So it's a very, very tight integration. And we have three there right now. It's uh, Image Vault, which is a digital asset management tool. Uh, we, they've just launched a new version now. It's InRiver, which is a PIM system, product information management system mostly used in e-commerce so it's actually yeah I'll, 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 I'll mention a little bit about these add-ons and then you have Aptos which is behavior merchandising I think there are slides on this is here okay thanks so if you looked at Aptos for example it's um, sort of a it's, it's a tool that uh, listens to everything that is happening on the site and also what is not happening on the site when a visitor goes through there so it knows what you click on, and it knows what you don't click on, and they listen to that. And it sort of sees the, yeah, it is a very smart algorithm, and it can present. So for example, if you have a, someone searches for champagne, but it ends up buying a Chardonnay. If that happens one or two times, next time someone searches for champagne, there's sort of a highlighted little Chardonnay in the search result. And that is, all those things are automatically is happening and just to give you an example of the different um, uh, what it listens to is th this is an example for you Trevor you know perfume that's your can I get this computer <laughs> yeah so if, if you look at sales numbers for example uh, uh, the, you can see that this perfume was sold in 125 so that's the best oh, we've sold a lot of that perfume so what should we do now but then you have other other uh, things to take in cons consideration. What, during what time frame, for example? So that was during six months, but here you have, oh, this one sold 100 in one and a half week. But how, how, how was the conversion? How much was it displayed? It turns out that this was displayed 600 times, but only sold 100 and it was during this time period. This was displayed 200 times, a better conversion. And also, related sales. So if someone bought this product, did they buy something else? And it turns out that this one sold 19 one week, it was displayed 240 times, and it actually ended up that other products were bought as well. And there are a few more other of these. So it takes all this into consideration into this algorithm, and it can automatically present content depending on what people do on the website. It's a bit, it's really cool actually. It's difficult. Yeah, yeah, it's happening. It's pushing. It's happening yeah, everywhere. It's, it's happening everywhere. Yeah. Pushing, pushing the to what you want them to buy. If you no, but, but uh, to be honest, it's like walking into a store. Mm -hmm. There's a sales guy there watching you, everything you do. If 
if you combine this with personalization and market automation, it's quite creepy. <laughs> uh, just to give you a few examples, you have adaptive search, like I mentioned, that's if something, uh, you search for something, you ended up buying another thing, you can auto-complete as well, so you can be in control over the auto-complete. It's all based on behavior to the site. So it'll, it'll know, it'll learn what people typed in and what they were trying to get to. So we'll put those ahead of the correct spelling or whatever. <laughs> and also the did, did you mean. Yeah. And faceted navigation. So it actually, it can, yeah, in which order you have the facets, you can actually, if it ends up, if you, you look searching for a champagne and you end up buying a champagne, but you've uh, done sort of a filtering with the alcohol strength, if that is important for you, and someone searches for champagne the next time, you might actually have that faceted a little bit higher up in the facet list. Does that make sense? So it moves things around just, and it looks at the <coughs> conversions. Yeah. You can also work with panels, how you show things. The facets, as I showed you. And in, in each specific facet as well. You can have different uh, recommendation zone work with banners as well, latest sold products and sold out, those kind of things, all dependent on what, what you're giving on the website. This is a pretty, uh, uh, it's a really powerful, <coughs> powerful behavior tool. So it's really, really, really cool. And is it specific to working with commerce? Sorry, it's... Is it specifically only work with commerce tool? Then you have the other add-on, which is in River, which is a, sorry, uh, no, which is the PIM product information management. So sometimes you have um, the commerce up here, the online commerce, uh, which is takes care of the online world. Uh, then you have the ERP here, where you have the point of truth with all the products and the invoicing, uh, and then you have the offline world somewhere here. You have an actual store, you have a physical catalog here. So you can have the PIM in between that takes care of the products. Does that make sense? So you actually you get uh, product, the basic product information into the PIM, you enrich it there, and there's uh, heaps of functionalities with uh, um, the images or, and those kind of things. You can work with multiple seasons and, and, and run campaigns through there. But you can also take care of the offline world. So you can say, okay, let's create a campaign here. So it's a uh, uh, yeah, champagne just went. So the, this champagne from uh, France, of course. Uh, let's do a campaign for that. We'll push it up to the web. So it takes care of it up at the web or with the, all the different multi-channels, the online world. But it also goes into the, uh, the physical catalog that is sent out every week. It also takes care of the in-store. So the store manager can get something to print so they can put on the actual shelf with the champagne. Is. So it's a uh, in between there. It's a really powerful, uh, powerful tool. Yeah. Developer add-ons, I think you have to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, so um, I suppose with EP Server World in the community, there's a large amount of uh, plugins or open source um, additions that are made by the community. So um, it's possible to subscribe to those or EPServer might create plugins that it releases as betas or as open source as well. So that's just, I suppose, another level to the side of the more sort of established and certified and quality approved plugins. So EPServer is kind of using that a little bit to do uh, called out of band releases. So if there's some functionality or something that um, the add on guys have created in Stockholm that could be quite useful or relevant for you guys, but the next release might be eight months away and it could be released through there and you guys can start using it and adopting it earlier. So it just gives you a bit more agility, I suppose. So you have the three levels of add-ons. Uh, so so that, that is also a way to test add-ons, so to say, for, 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 from our point of view. It's that you have the, yeah, the loose relationship with all the different people out there. Then they can go down to the next level where you actually can add on and install it in the add-on store. Uh, 
and it's just a test the market need, test the technology if there's, and then if if it works, we'll have a tighter relationship, and who knows what's happening happening in the future after that. Questions on add-ons? I, I I must actually say that I've installed with maybe two or three questions Episerver CMS locally on my machine uh, months back when it was released in uh, last year and I've I've installed with no questions social reach the social tool uh, Google Analytics I also after that I updated from 7.0 to 7.1 and then he asked me how to insert an image. No, 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 no. But, <laughs> but I, I don't have uh, uh, integrations or custom. I'm just running on the vanilla installation. But I'm, I'm just saying it's it's pretty straightforward, and it takes care of the dependencies as well. So is there a difference between an Andreas install and a best practice install? <laughs> yeah. Probably. <laughs> 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 it did work actually. So it's still it's still running here. So We're not using it now though, are we? <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's <laughs> no, it's PowerPoint now. So in the near term and uh, the near future, so what will happen is um, the themes that we have with with our roadmap across all our products is of course m multi touch points or omni-channel, or omni, it's, it's Gartner call it something, uh, and Forrester call it something, but it's just a matter of, there's a lot more touch points coming into your website's content. So, so it's around sharing your content through those multiple channels, but then personalizing through those channels and getting analytics to seeing which channel performs better and, and all those sorts of aspects. And also the, the, the user centered, so it's all around what, 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 what the user does now. So it's not, you don't have to see all the content, it's, it's more context driven. Well, yeah, personalize it based on the user, which then goes into the marketing automation and, and those sorts of aspects as well. So if you know that they've looked at specific product pages or sections of your site, they may have registered to an event or something like that, then um, the automation might automatically send out an email with specific content relative to what they've seen inside the site for the event or something like that um, to help create that relationship. And, and as you've seen in the 7 version, we've, uh, we've focused a lot more on the u usability, uh, ease of use. Uh, so that's sort of, we see the shift and it has happened a little bit earlier in other parts of the world. Uh, the ownership of the website, it's not only the IT and the webmaster anymore, it's actually the sales manager and the marketing manager and it's another audience working with the website. So you need to have tools to empower them to, to, to work with it. And it's the Google Analytics integration that you can easily just create a persona, uh, target content to that persona and then get statistics on how that is doing in your, and that is something that you can do without <coughs> going via the IT department. Those kind of things. Yeah, I think the last point on development agility is going to be um, a bit more support around deployments and things like that as well. Um, and so that should help a little bit, as well as the add-ons that give you a little bit more flexibility. So we have been talking about, and it is on our website, these four Cs content, community, communication, and commerce. These four Cs have, of course, specific user behavior, uh, uh, and of course, content and, and products and, and those things. What we're doing is that we're merging this now from a product, uh, I'm not saying from a technical point of view only, we've already shown that, but from a, a messaging point of view as well. Uh, so we're gonna talk about, uh, it's gonna be not four Cs, it's gonna be two Cs. Digital marketing and commerce. So those are these two here. The community and the communication will be add-ons to this. So what I'm, the community part will actually be an add-on that works on the digital marketing or the uh, uh, commerce. Does that make sense? The idea is to federate all that user behavior between the different aspects, aspects sorry, of the platform to be able to then utilize that for personalization, automation of marketing things like that, mm. which is what the next big phase is of EP, I suppose. 
um, which is kind of what these slides are illustrating that visitors come to your site, they choose to come to the site when they want to come to the site, um, maybe through search or visit at certain times of day, etc. and you're broadcasting information to them. But um, the next phase of VP Server is starting to figure out how can we automate or create a more of a bi-directional relationship and make them come back to the site or want to be on the site, work through the site and create conversions. So it's about how we broadcast that information out. Um, is it going to be personalised personalized content out through the social channels? Are it going to be personalised emails that have automatically been recommended based on their behaviour through the sites? Um, is it going to be automatically recommended segments that are created based on their behaviour? Um, so those are kind of the ideas and um, what we're working to next in the next release, basically. Um, so this is kind of showing the roadmap in some form of way. So at the moment, um, 7 is released. We have EB Server Find in there as well. So Find is um, an enterprise, medium enterprise search provider, I suppose. So it's really good for creating the typical search results, but it's also very good for pulling back um, collections of content and information for your listings, etc. as well. It has a bit of behavior in there, so the autocomplete spell correction, etc. is based on behavior through the site, but it's very flexible. Um, it's easy for developers to create um, quite good listings and search um, based on sort of the functionality you expect, all the autocomplete, the spell correction, all the filters, facets, related content, related information, all that sort of stuff. Um, Part of seven or is that it's in a service. It's a service, yeah. So CMS uh, seven point one R uh, two um, came out a couple of weeks ago, which is what we looked at um, this morning. So it has the self-optimizing block inside there, a few UI improvements um, to help make things a little bit easier, better support for workflows, and a SharePoint connector that's a lot more compatible and sort of a lot more optimized for working in Epi Server seven. And the latest SharePoint. Yeah, and the latest SharePoint, of course. Um, we've got another release of VP Server 7.2 um, due around June, July this year. Um, and that's going to, again, improve the editor experience a little bit, provide some better deployment tools, and also work more compatible with commercial clouds as well as our own cloud. Um, so, to give you an idea of some of the items that might be in there, um, what should I say? <laughs> It's going to be a new um, digital asset management tool. So the file manager that you guys have been working with is going to be an improved version of that. So inside there. Okay. Um, and that's also where Meadowlark comes in. So Meadowlark is the, the, the name for our marketing automation tool. So that's going to be introduced um, in a similar sort of times to provide multi-channel campaign automation. So we've got a couple of slides to talk about um, what's going to be inside that. Um, and then in the long term, CMS 8, I suppose, has been codenamed Kingfish, Kingfisher. So who really knows what's going to be in that? <laughs> but I suppose that's an important note that if you guys have feedback or things that you'd like to, uh, EpiServer to listen to or to understand for the next release, um, EpiServer wants to know about it, basically. So the more information that we get from you guys means things like X forms that might be not so wonderful for you if we've got more people that are saying they want something better it will be prioritized a lot higher. Okay. Um, there's also more training that's going to be um, more around business user training, um, multi-channel automation and stuff like that as well. Okay, um, okay so the slide's kind of illustrating Meadowlark a little bit. Um, these are the core features that are going to be in there, so the, the marketing automation. There's going to be a profile store which will be built up from a collection of information, it will be implicit and explicit, so it will be based on behaviour, um, visits of site visits, but specific pages, categories that they visit, similar to personalisation. There will also be information in there that you've got of your registered users or users that are integrated into your CRM, um, information like that. That profile store can then be used for segmentation and, and content classification. So you, you can classify content based on various levels or states of the conversion process, I suppose. So if they've come to the site once, if they've returned to the site, or if um, they've 
contacted you in another form through another channel or if they've responded to an email, if they've opened an email and what they've seen inside the email. So it will start building segments or profiles and then it will automatically suggest um, visitors and put them into those segments so you can start profiling them and putting, giving them related com content and information. Um, and that comes into the rules engine. So you'll be able to define various rules um, similar to defining the criteria for the personalization. There'll be various reporting in there as well, so you can get some feedback, you can see what's going on. Um, and there'll be uh, various level of integration with um, CRMs like Microsoft Dynamics and Salesforce as well, to sort of help enrich the segmentation and, and the profile store. So, so yeah, that's kind of the next piece of functionality that's coming out that's essentially moving in the place of CMO, which is now part of CMS 7. Is, is this new to you guys, the, the marketing automation? Have, have you read about this? And Because this is something that a lot of customers out there do ask for. And it's just... Yeah. But, but it, it's just a, a simple example that I usually... So there's an anonymous person that visits your website a few times. They look at product A, not product B or C or D. Look at product A a few times. Okay, a couple of months pass. Mm -hmm then they go back to your site, they register for an event somewhere. So you, all of a sudden you get their email address. But according to that email address, you know that they are interested in product A. So in the welcome email that is sent out, why don't just send some information about product A there? Does that make sense? Those kind of simple things are, 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 are easy to do. It's scary also, but why not? I like it. <laughs> Otherwise, you just get the information about all the products and you get but You can learn from behavior about the visitors on the site as well and compare them to other ones. So if you know the path and the traffic and the behavior they have, then new visitors are most likely to go through those paths as well. So you can take advantage of that. So when a competing product with something like Triple Dimensions, they're not necessarily... Sorry, When a competing product with something like Triple Dimensions, they're not necessarily going to tie it to the website. Uh, yeah, that's sort of a competitor in, in one sense on a few of these things. Oh, not particularly, yes. I think there is... Yeah, so again, one of the advantages with MetaLife would be it would be really easy to use, like our personalization as well. So compared to our competitors, it might have maybe Honestly, 80 90% of functionality compared to our large competitors, but it's probably used a hundred times more often because anybody can use it. Um, yeah, do we have to start this stuff? So, <coughs> online sales section is more concerned with the roadmap around commerce a little bit. So, with it, this next release of commerce, which is due again in June, July this year. Um, it's EpiServer's uh, first major release of commerce since purchasing Media Chase. So it's going to have a lot of, um, <coughs> a lot of EP, it's going to be EpiServerized, so to speak. And one of those key focuses is going to be around markets. So you'll be able to segment um, products, inventory, pricing, um, discounts, tax, warehouses into individual markets. And of course, those markets can be um, influenced out by different channels as well. So a market might be um, it might be based on seasons, it might be regions, it might be different types of products, um, but it kind of creates an extra level of separation and gives you a lot more flexibility. Okay. So you can have your se separate markets, and then you have with the CMS since it's you have the different channels. So you can have separate content in different channels. You can have multilingual as well, uh, since that's uh, out of the box in the in the CMS. And then you can have different market targeting many, many of these channels. So you can have one market targeting all of them, or you can have one market only targeting one channel. Does that make sense? So you can have, it's all flexible when it comes to what a market is and how you present it in the different channels, languages, etc. cetera. Uh, yeah, just to give an example of a market, if you're a global company, you can have different uh, brands in different parts of the world, and the customers uh, need other things, etc. in other parts of the world, there are different maturity when it comes to yeah, technology or IT or, or whatever it is, so it's, you have to have different content, different, so you see them as different markets. But 
without with, with episode you have the oh well, sorry sort of yeah we, 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 we take care of that automatically and we of course monitoring and optimize it so if you look at the actual sales roadmap so where we are now is here the commerce r1 was released last year same time just after seven yeah just after seven was released there we, then we also launched the uh, the in river pin uh, as an add-on and also the aptos behavior merchandising as an as an add-on as well and those two can be sold via episode and we do support and training the next thing that will happen now in the near term which is a couple of months is the actual next seven episode of commerce seven where we have these multi-market we will also have a few more add-ons and then comes the metal lark and the metal lark is across both the CMS and the commerce of course yeah so the focus on commerce 7 is around the multi sites and the multi markets and helping merchandiser and sorry merchandiser and marketing um, being able to easily create promotions um, work with the campaign optimization and work across all those different segments in their markets um, as well as introducing a whole new UI to make it a lot easier to work with. Um, then the next release, <coughs> code named Raven, so to speak, um, is going to have more focus around B2B. So there'll be a lot more functionality and a lot more usability around B2B implementations and B2B to C. There'll be new deployment tools. Um, there'll be usability around orders, service, and fulfillment. Um, and also, again, there'll be more business-related training around how to work with the content around multiple channels, multiple markets, and the personalization and the automation through commerce as well as the um, CMS as well. Um, perhaps, did you want to see a couple of screenshots to see where it was going? Um, I think... You guys see that? Maybe oh, we have to point. Oh. No, don't do that. <laughs> um, okay, so you can kind of, no. It's kind of you can see a little bit that the UI is starting to reflect the CMS in a much more common sense. So we have the catalogs through here. We have the different markets up here, so we can flip over to multiple markets. They'll be similar inside the CMS as well. So then all the catalogs, all the departments, all the products and all the variations, the pricing, etc., will all be reflected um, based on the market. So we can manage the catalogs through here. Um, we have all the individual items, all the products, um, all the SKUs, etc., through here. On the right, we have the new media tool that we can use um, to work with the media. Um, Let's see if there's anything. So all the content, all the product information will be managed in a very similar way to the CMS. Um, of course, taking advantage of all the validation framework, um, etc. You'll be able to preview all the product details and all the information directly inside the PIM itself. Um, you know, select different markets. Uh, and of course, they'll all be available inside the CMS. Um, I think that's probably all I've got. Yeah. I think the major, the major improvement is essentially going to be the usability in the new UI to stay consistent and to allow the different use of different markets. Um, so everything will be drag and drop and all that sort of stuff. Um, I think those are the only screenshots I've got at the moment. Not sure how uh, official this is, so we might uh, have a look at uh, censoring things. Yeah, in the video. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we've uh, we've now presented the commerce part of it and looking into the future and talking about the add-ons and the uh, uh, the hosting. What do you think? There's a lot of things happening, at least. You mm -hmm. Yeah, this yep. is what happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can probably uh, send more information on. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
absolutely. But it, it, it's a definitely a growth area, the commerce, because it's a bit of a gap in the market for, <coughs> from our point of view. There's the really expensive ones, and there's the really cheap ones. And if you're in a .NET environment, there are not really .NET commerce with good digital marketing that has a good price point. So it's it's that that's even so in the expensive competitors, uh, we've won a lot of uh, clients just because we have a strong CMS as well. And it is 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 really easy to use and a good integration in between. More questions? There are some prices here. Okay, <laughs> ladies first then. It is, but we have uh, uh, partners that do add-ons that are for local councils. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I, I've, uh, I just did discuss this quickly with Trevor. So, and I'll set you definitely in contact with those partners. So they actually they've built an add-on towards local councils on EpiServer CMS Seven. So they they've done a, a few implementations in Australia on that, and they're they mm -hmm. they they've learned a lot on the new version and so they, they want to help other local councils. So is that around consultations or around? Yeah, that's certainly where we are. Yeah, because yeah. when we consult on the site as well, we see the way. Yeah, and I'll survey and find yeah. out that we, We'll do, uh, I think we, w what we can do is actually, uh, maybe Lucy can help facilitate some sort of web demo, so we can demo what those guys have done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there are a couple of other councils that yeah, happy to do. We can definitely do that. So it will be, yeah, from, yeah. Might be a inner question, I'm not sure. Um, so you know you think in the product towards kind of doing a, what is an offline CMS, so uh, rather than a mobile web, you've got a mobile app using HTML5 with the product like the phone gap. You've got paper integration, which is a bit more magazine focused, but you almost want to be able to configure it such that you've got the ability to create CMS content but take you know, an aspect of that compiled offline. So you want to be able to have some of that compiled pages offline, HTML5, and then have some of that other content synced in as it, you know, the app comes alive and it gets a connection and wants to bring the content across. So you've got the benefit of, of an allocation, mm -hmm. but you've got the CMS content. So you can build stuff yourself with the phone gap, but if there was any kind of integration that you're planning or working on or looking to do with something like phone gap. A lot of clients have created native apps with a channel inside the CMS. Yeah. To they use the channel to generate the content, and the app just sucks it up, basically. Yeah. So just with it is because uh, something like okay, uh, for example, HTML5, and you can then mm. use that to compile an other piece or an Android application. But you kind of want to take it offline would be really, really good. Yeah. yeah. But you want to take advantage of the CMS aspects of it. Mm. So give it the drag and drop and create page content. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what what EpiServer is doing on that, or what sort of partners we have in the pipeline that does that. I know. Yeah, Pug, Pug Pig, Yeah, the UK company. Yeah, Pugpig, They've got a net on the yeah. That's more for magazines. That's yeah. More, it's just more like a flip type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Opposed to more of a again a bit product. I know that. Yeah. I know. I know that we've done. Uh, I think Alan, one of the, he made some sort of native app that actually, so the, that app took information from the CMS yes. and showed it in the app. So there are some blog posts out there, but that was done a year, more than a year ago. Okay. So that's. It's not in our official roadmap that I know of, but I, I'm happy to. But uh, that's just a very normal question. That sort of w when you're, you have your web presence, do I go a mobile-specific site? Do I go responsive design, or do I do an app? And it all depends on where 
what, what, what you're doing or wh why not do all. But there are some different aspects with that. Yeah. If you look at the mobile site specific or uh, responsive design, yeah. if you look at search engine optimization, for example, Google prefers that you have responsive design. That's officially stated on their websites. If you do a mobile specific site, you actually might lose ranking. There's probably a few people in this room that uh, will have dear customers that they don't have a connection at the time, so they want to have a mobile device in, in .dot.ru, for example, or in the farm, and um, they have access to some or all of the content there rather than mobile web. And that's kind of the future. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that when they go back and update it, it gets all the yeah, yeah, it's definitely. We need to make it see the same thing for like bulk hunts and stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, it's just pumping out. You know, like yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> but Especially with energy as your car. <coughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's, more, it's more like a query engine that's, that they can query the data in, in your in your catalog or in your content directory in a more in a quite powerful way. So like I said, based on geographic location or uh, text, you can say if you have one page, you can just get similar pages that are similar to that based on the text and kind of boost the matching if they're close in category as well or if they share the same categories. So you can get sort of very powerful query engines, but it's not based on, I guess the next layer is to add the based on user behavior as well. But, but as, as a standard, it's, it's to do, because everything that is not based on the structure of, of the contents, but it's all based on different. Tags, uh, so you can table your content to different things. And <coughs> tags are one aspect. Tags could be one aspect. Yeah. Categories could be one aspect. Time when it was published. Uh, if you have, like this has a geographic location, you can pull the geographic location of the user and say, highlight the closer the, these items are, the, the higher it's going to come in the search result. Or uh, the latest stuff that was updated, the, uh, the, the higher it's going to get in your search result, or in your in your sort of sidebar where you have other things or similar things. Or, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it can actually it can search content that is not episode content as well. Okay. And so it can sit across the one one that was just out of comments. That's one can sit across. Just easy episode find sits across yeah. all our, and it, it it is more of a. Framework. It's not something that you install and it works. It's, it's a, yeah. And this is just a simple example to show a few things that you can do do with it. But it's still a developer. You still have to know yeah. know. What to do. Yeah. But but if you still want to do this and you have to build it from scratch, it's going to take a lot longer. Mm -hmm. Just you know, we have thousands of tracks, and you know, with the mind business, we can lay things out. We can just say, I want you know, we, we categorize them by the thing. Yeah, yeah, but you, yeah, yeah, but you can you can also have who are you? I'm uh, yeah, I'm 25. I'm uh, right. just I'm done a marathon. Maybe yeah, then you just show. And you kind of you it's still treated as a search result. So mm -hmm. A lot of things it's more like you boost stuff that's uh, stuff that's closer to what you are looking at or what you're interested in. It comes higher up. It doesn't filter out. It's not it's a hard. Well, you can filter as well, obviously. There's a lot of things that where, where the powerfulness is is that you can, like, if you're looking at a track, you can set well tracks that are close close to that length. Mm. You put on top of top of it, but you don't do a query saying give me all the tracks that are similar to that and exclude all the others because if there are no tracks that are that mm. length, it would be empty. But in this case, you're just putting the similar tracks higher at the top. So, so for that matter, and that's just more of an example. It's, it's still like the, it's still at the current state. It's more of a developer tool that gives you all these options. But that's the stuff we ask our developers. We want to be able to, you know, yeah. tag things and put stuff on them. And yeah. that's the that framework makes that, those kind of stuff very a lot simpler. Yeah. Yeah, and it's sold in sort of yeah, it's a service. So it's a monthly a monthly fee and it depends on the number of indexed uh, documents so to say and traffic. But Lucy knows all the pricing. <laughs> yeah, any more questions? Uh, did that answer your question? No. I'm happy to <coughs> but we'll still be here for next or two anywhere. And the, uh, we forgot to mention, there's also at the back end, uh, you, you get the statistics. So you get all the, yeah, a lot of people type Sydney, but they spelled with an I instead, which they do in Sweden for some reason. But that's those kind of things, you have a back end for that. So the autocomplete or the did you mean or those kind of things. <coughs> yeah. More questions? Your glossy version.
brochure that talks about new and improved data integration. What's that all about? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Good to <laughs> <about. laughs> I think it, it, it might be referring to um, content providers, maybe. Um, if we look back inside the commerce site, Um, those categories in the products down the right hand side that I dragged into the home page um, that's actually coming from the commerce database so independence of CMS database so it's possible to create content providers I suppose that's coming from another repository to let you utilize it inside the CMS in real time or how it's implemented so that, that you can pick stuff out of the eSQL database for them? Mm -hmm. could be a collection of XML files, a feed, whatever it gives you a lot of power, but it comes with a lot of danger, too. <laughs> I think that was worth. <laughs> so, yeah. Did that answer your question? It could have. <laughs> we, have, we actually have a 40 minute uh, or 45 minute uh, uh, PowerPoint session going through all the integration you can do with Epic Server. Is that only available in the commerce product or is it in the CMS as well? This is CMS. Cool. What's the, um, what's the uh, proposer? No, we specifically didn't use the proposer. That's why you use no, Integrin. Right. <laughs> can you clarify that last statement you just made, please? Oh, well. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. one, one side was going to win. No, yeah, Composer is uh, rebuilt in CMS 7. Oh, really? But there is a. Uh, uh, not sure when in time, but there is a script. So you can upgrade path for Composer to new CMS. Be in June. The upgrade path will be out after the next release of the CMS, June, July. Not sure about that. Uh, yeah. Not sure about that. Henrik, what do you say? Have you heard anything? No. No. So June, July doesn't allow for that? It does. There'll be a path that'll be in that release. Uh, we can get back to you on, on exactly when the. It, it's better that I say so in. Then I say it's there in June and it's not. Uh, as for as for using the upgrade into the original, it's much easier than the four to five upgrade. Uh, oh, yeah. It's it was somewhat mobile. harder than the six to seven. Or well, five, uh, five to six, or six to to R two. And the 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 goal, and I think it's probably kept to that, is that it will take. There will be a within a day's worth of development time to uh, the sort of technical changes that you need to do to the upgrade. Then it's more of other things. That obviously doesn't give you all the doesn't rearrange your stuff into blocks. Doesn't, uh, but you can build a uh, CMS seven side just as you would do a CMS six side. Uh, so. It is, it's not a tricky, and it's still an upgrade, it's not a migration, and you don't have to start a new site. So you can upgrade and then start working through your site. Yeah, and, and the, the code, the API changes, the code changes are, yeah, less than a day, it should take to, to fix those bits. It's that bit has been moved to there, this has, uh, so it's, it's more about, uh, so it, it should be fairly easy to, to upgrade, but it's not just this, the five to six was just running the tool and you're uh, pretty much done. From an editor's perspective, the old UI is actually still there. So you can, yeah, that's the old UI on the on a new CMS 7. So it's still there. So you could upgrade it, theoretically use it in the same way and slowly, or other users could use the new UI. And we're just about to do an upgrade on our side. And our side's got components, isn't it? Yeah. 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 <coughs> there you go, check up to us first and then see what's Yeah, <laughs> you learn all, all the hard lessons first. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.
Any more questions? More questions now? Is it still using Tony MCA? Yes. Yes. So there, there are a few add-ons that were there, uh, in the roadmap. So there will be a spell checking add-on to Tiny MC soon as well. So there are the a little bit smaller add-ons that you can Paste install. Paste unformatted. Well. Sorry. Paste unformatted. Uh, sure, not sure. It is paste is clear to yeah. But it doesn't. Paste yeah. unformatted. Clear. It's stripped of the styles. Yeah, it looks like it works better. So you just grab one out of Word and just put it in there. It does. Yeah, I did that. We, we can't do really. it. <laughs> oh, really? We have to go back into the HTML and strip out all the... Okay. We have to highlight it and click there on the... Used, there the used to be a tool that would take that out. You can toggle yeah. between plain text and text. And there's also pasting from Word, yeah. which will work with the styles. So like when I pasted that document in uh, previously, if I find it, um, it has various formatting and stuff in there, which it um, removed just by pasting it. So the font and the style of the font and the size of the font and everything would be controlled by the block? Uh, yeah, or the page, yeah. But you can still, you can still associate styles if you... Yeah. So if you go back to the Word document and grab the text that's red, that 500,000, and copy that and paste it, presumably it'll end up being black. Yeah. Just taking everything. It's all gone. Yeah, you can you can toggle it between paste as plain text and go back to regular.